Good afternoon. Good to be with you again. I'm going to speak to you tonight from Living by Faith from the book of Habakkuk, Hope in the Darkest of Days. That is exactly what Habakkuk felt like he was living in, the darkest of days. Habakkuk was written just prior to Judah being carried into captivity into the land of Babylon. God was using the Babylonians to punish the Assyrians, just as God had used the Assyrians to punish the northern nation of Israel. And so God was going to use them to speak into the nation of Judah their life. And God was going to give them a word that they could live by faith, even in the darkest times. The most powerful verse in this book is probably from the fourth verse of chapter number two. It says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. The last part of that verse is directly right to Habakkuk, but also not to Habakkuk, but to us, the church. The last part of that verse is quoted three times in the New Testament. The just shall live by faith. I want to read the first four verses of the first chapter and then the last three verses of the last chapter. The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear, even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth for the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. Now, the last three verses. Though the fig tree may not bloom nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the field and there be no herd in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me to walk on my high heels. Habakkuk lived in terrible times, and sometimes we feel like we are living in terrible times. We look around us and we wonder, how long, O Lord, before you come? I don't know, but Jesus tells us to always be ready for in such an hour as we think not, he will come. But we also, in the meantime, we should have the same kind of heart that Habakkuk had, a heart that prays, a heart that is touched with the sin that is in this world. Habakkuk had the heart of the righteous. He cries out for justice. He cries out for a revival to take place in his land. He said, the law is paralyzed. There's no justice. And how long, O oh Lord, before you don't do something? Even now, the church often quotes the verse, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We are wanting God's spirit to be poured out because only by the Holy Spirit can there be another awakening in this country that will change the temperature of the heart of everybody that's in this world. It's the only thing that's going to change the church to a wake-up call to seek the Lord and seek Him only. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 16. Peter quotes a verse that comes out of Leviticus. It says, the scriptures say, you must be holy, for I am holy. Habakkuk knew this for sure. God was not going to let sin go on forever. God was going to step in. But he was wanting God to step in with mercy and not with vengeance. It caused him to be in much prayer. With what we go see going on today, the church would do well if we would be in much prayer and not so much on social media complaining about things that are happening. We can change things by taking our prayers to God. Cast all your burdens upon him because God cares for us. Habakkuk knew that God had destroyed the whole earth in Noah's time. He's told Noah that his spirit would not always strive, would not always contend with men. So for 120 years, while Noah is building the ark, I would love to think that people would come and ask Noah, why are you building the ark? And he would tell them, God is using the ark as a way to save people. 
And if you'll trust God, you can get into the ark. But the Bible tells us nobody heard them or nobody paid any attention to the message. I started to say nobody heard it. I believe everybody heard it. But only Noah, his sons, and his wives made it into the ark. And so Habakkuk knew that God judges sin. He did the same thing in Sodom and Gomorrah. Habakkuk probably kept wondering, when is God going to step in? I ask that question, and you do too. We go to God in prayer. Churches are having prayer meetings, focusing just strictly on prayer. When are you going to step in? You have said that you're going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Young people, old people, everybody will be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are asking for that. Psalms 72, verses 13 and 14. He says, He, God, will take pity on the weak and the needy, and He will save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence. For precious is their blood in his sight. Habakkuk began to pray, and God hears. God does not ignore Habakkuk, nor will God ignore me and you. Jesus gave a parable in the New Testament, Luke chapter 18. And Luke says the intent that Jesus gave the parable was that people would always pray and not ever, ever give up. And he spoke about the widow woman coming to the unjust judge. This woman had no influence in the city, none whatsoever. But she just kept coming to the judge. And listen to what he said. She wanted justice. When we cry out to God for justice, what is right, God will answer. He will not ignore us. And she kept coming to the judge and kept coming to the judge. And finally the judge says, I don't fear God. I don't care about anybody. I don't regard man. No man, no man intimidates me. Yet because her continue will come unto me, I will give her what she is asking. And then Jesus says, that's how God is with me and you. He says, but the last part of that parable says this. However, when Jesus comes back, will he really find faith on the earth? The key element of real faith, true faith, is that we continue to pray and then look for an answer. And so we find here in this, God tells Habakkuk, I am at work. Let me read those verses 5 and 6. It says, look at the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it were told you. For indeed I am raising up the Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation, which marches through the breadth of the earth, to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. Hear what the first part of that says. It will utterly astound you. God did reveal his plan to Habakkuk, but he also revealed that plan in much more detail to the prophet Jeremiah. And what God speaks into Habakkuk's heart was going to help Habakkuk. Anybody who heard this prophecy was going to strengthen them. Also, what God spoke into Jeremiah's life was going to strengthen the people that read that prophecy. In fact, Daniel in captivity, who was taken captive out of the first invasion of the Babylonians, he was reading the book of Jeremiah one day. It's in the book of Daniel. He says, and I understood by the prophecy that is written in Jeremiah that we would be here for 70 years. And so in that, as he read that prophecy, he began to pray and say, God, what's going to happen next? What are we talking about? We're talking about the just shall live by faith. Faith for dark times. Faith to get us through hard times. This prophecy kept them through those invasions of the Babylonians. It kept them through 70 years of captivity. Those that really believed in Jehovah God. Because they knew that God was going to come through for them. Also, short term, Habakkuk. The three invasions as they come. He just knew that God had his hand and his eye and his plan over the righteous. God is working a plan. Be utterly astounded. Just a little bit back to the New Testament. Jesus and Lazarus, or Jesus and his disciples, had been to Jerusalem and then they left. And then they got word that Lazarus had died. Or not that he died, but that he was sick. Let me get that right. 
And so he stayed there where he was two more days. And then finally, Jesus speaks to his disciples, let's go to Bethany. And they said, Lord, the last time you were there, the Jews wanted to kill you. And then, but Jesus waited until Lazarus was dead four days. He wanted the disciples to be utterly astounded. He wanted everybody else, Mary and Martha, to be utterly astounded. He is stressing that he has the power of the resurrection. God is foretelling to Habakkuk what is going to take place. Not only does he tell him what's going to take place, but he tells him at the end, the Babylonians are going to be judged in the same way by another nation that's greater than them. Be utterly astounded. Here's a verse that I've just spoken about, Jeremiah 29, verse 10. This is a verse that comforted Daniel's heart while he was in Babylon. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and I will perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. And right after that verse is the verse that everybody knows. I know the plans I have for you. God knows what he is absolutely doing. Hope in these dark days. When God begins to speak into Habakkuk's life, Habakkuk says, I don't see it. How could that be? Let me read to you verse 13 of the first chapter. He says, that, well, let me read 12 and 13. He says, are you not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, the Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord. You have appointed them for judgment, O rock. You have marked them for correction. But you are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devours a person more righteous than he? Habakkuk was saying, I don't get it. They're worse than we are. They're worse sinners than we are. How are you going to use them? And that is when God began to download into him his plan. Every one of us must remember that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We just had this COVID and we're in the middle of the COVID thing right now. There's been a repeat of the surge of this and now some churches aren't gathering together again and we wonder what is God up to? God knows what he's doing, but he's looking for a church that will connect with him in faith and in prayer and in believing and know that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. Let's wait upon God and see what he's going to do. Romans 11 verse 33 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. How is God going to work all of this out with the COVID and all this racial tension? God will for those that are looking to him for answers. God's word is absolutely sure. The second chapter, verses 1 through 4. Habakkuk says, I will stand my watch. I will set myself on the rampart. I will watch to see what he or God will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Listen to this. This is what God says. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end... It will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Personal faith. Personal faith. God says, everything I'm writing to you, I'm telling you, write it down. I want you to go share this. Make sure everybody hears it because it's going to come to pass. It may wait a long time. It took 70 years, a little more than 70 for here because the first invasion hadn't taken place yet. From the time of the first invasion to the destruction was about 17 years. And then they spent 70 years into captivity. And God said, it's going to surely come to pass. Just write the vision. Write the vision. What do we see today around us? We know that God is watching over his word. In the first chapter of Jeremiah, when God is telling Jeremiah to prophesy all of these astounding things, he said, I am watching over my word to make sure it comes to pass. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 1. 
This is how it speaks in the New Living Translation. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his servants the events that must soon take place. And he sent his angel to present this revelation to his servant John. This was written more than 2,000 years ago. And right now, we know that God knows his business because we see the book of Revelation being unfolded and coming to pass. And we will watch it come to pass. It will surely come to pass. It speaks about difficult times, but it also speaks about God never, ever forsaking his people. It speaks in there about the righteous being gathered out of this world and the wicked being judged forever and ever. God knows his business. That's why it's written so we can watch and go through that with great confidence that God has us. God spoke this word to Habakkuk. So not only Habakkuk, but every other believer that read this could have great confidence. Also, it puts a rejoicing in us. The joy, the happiness of the Lord is our strength. If we lose all of our joy, all of our hope, we don't have anything to hope in, no strength. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 through 19. I've read this at the beginning, but I want to read it again. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the field, and though there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me to walk on the high hills. That is who God is. Habakkuk is saying, even though there may be famine, there don't a lot of cows, there's the olive crops not producing. In fact, in all of that, it seems to be drying up. I'm going to rejoice in God because I know that I am in his hands and the nation of Judah is in his hands. The whole earth is in his hands. Paul, Philippians chapter four, verse four, last verse. First chapter, Paul speaks about rejoicing. Second chapter, he speaks about rejoicing. Third chapter, he does speak about rejoicing. And in the fourth chapter, verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Jesus speaking to us out of the book of Luke. He says, When you see all of these things come to pass, all of the unrest, lift up your eyes into the heavens. For our redemption, our Savior, is drawing near. Let's pray. Father, we look to you with great confidence because you are a sovereign God. Totally sovereign, knows everything. Your ways are past finding out, O oh God, past finding out. And we are called by you to live the just or the righteous shall live by faith, even in the very darkest of times, we have faith because you have already set the end. It's written in stone. It's written in your word. And you will watch over your word to perform it. But right now, I hear this word from you. You will pour water or you will pour the Holy Spirit on the one that is thirsty. You will pour floods on the dry ground. I am asking of you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the generation that I live in, that I believe that it is the last generation. I'm asking of you, Jesus, to pour out of the Holy Spirit. Stir our hearts that we know that we have power through the Holy Spirit. We have confidence through your word. A very solid foundation to stand upon. And we also know that you are for us. And if you are for us, it doesn't matter who is against us. We will stand with you and you will stand with us. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Remember, we have hope even in the darkest of days that we have. Jesus is hope.